With motivation, the number one rule is not to rely on motivation because the problem is that it's fuel. So it's never there when you low and you really don't feel like going. Motivation is not something that you can rely on. So instead, you'd rather want to design your environment for success, setting yourself up, whether it's making sure you have a gym that's enjoyable to go to, you want to feel comfortable there where you are. Being a dad is one of the most rewarding roles we will ever have in our lives, but also can be one of the most overwhelming. When we find ourselves facing the pressures of juggling the demands of our family, careers, and life. This show will feature industry experts in mental health, social services, and personal development, along with resilient dad role models, whose stories of overcoming the challenges of parenting get a new vision for the life you and your kids deserve. I'm your host, Pat Tedemeco, and this is The Resilient Dad Show. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Resilient Dad Show. I'm your host, Pat T. Domenico, and on today's show, we have Matt Hamill with us. Matt, welcome to the show. G'day, Pat. How are you, fellas? Thanks for having me. Excited to be on the show and hopefully have a bit of an impact and be able to help some people out. Definitely will, though. I'm sure you will. Uh, so a little bit about Matt. So Matt's a, a loving father of three beautiful children. He was the founder of three F45 gyms in Melbourne, Victoria. But unfortunately, due to some external circumstances with that we all experienced with COVID and so forth and the impact that it had on, on certain businesses, Matt had to temporarily part ways with, with that. But Matt, can you tell us a bit about your journey starting your first F45 and was it being in the fitness industry? Was that something that you were always wanting to do? Yeah, definitely. I was stuck in an office job that I wasn't enjoying. It was paying quite well, which I was very lucky, which gave me the sort of ability to be able to get myself into the industry. But it was all because of the birth of um, our daughter, Stevie. I wanted to show her that you can chase your dreams. So back in 2016 is when we opened the first studio and F45 was really going off at that time. So as you probably imagine, it was a very pumping gym um, and we had quite some success there which gave us the ability to continue on and grow and include some more studios there but yeah, yeah. very lucky and it was probably the best on our lives really and uh like i'm assuming you would have served and dealt with thousands of clients during the, those times and let me see with the men what were a common reason that people started and what were some of the initial challenges that they had starting. Okay. So look, I found men, a lot of it was involved around self-esteem or the way they perceive themselves not being quite happy. So, you know, them coming in to try something that's in a highly motivated environment or atmosphere. So motivation was definitely key or something that was lacking them at that time. And I guess that's why 45 was successful was because it did have that atmosphere and support. They had your coaches there. And that's another thing. A lot of guys come in not knowing what to do. So all of that definitely helps. But with men, I found that they're after a challenge more so than anything. But yeah, it's interesting to see how many people fall off the bandwagon quite quickly. Fair. What? were some of the reasons why, so from my understanding, a lot of F45, the, like the structure is also incorporating challenges like, yeah, yeah. And, so six, eight weeks or whatever they may be. So the people that achieve the results and continued with those results and maintain those results compared to someone that either started, only lasted a couple of weeks or got the results, but as soon as that environment of not having the challenge was there, they went back to where they were from day one or even even worse. Yeah, definitely. So with that there, I find that it's an unrealistic time frame is probably the most common mistake a lot of people make. They think that in eight weeks, you, you can make the that transformation and just be able to keep it. But it's not that. It's, um, it's actually a lifestyle that needs to be built into your life and it needs to be consistent for you to maintain those results. If you are looking for a quick fix, it's not um, bad habits again. And a lot of the times people come in and do the challenge and then go do their own thing. But some mm -hmm. problems with that is that these people don't really have a plan for themselves while they're at the gym. They're not taking into consideration things like rest days, which are quite important. So getting that balance right is very important. 
And another thing I find is that there's a lack of accountability as well. When you have your coach just answer to, there's your accountability factor. And if you get to know the client well enough, you get to know what makes them with their exercise. And I've found that with most men, the people who had the greatest results and stuck to it the most were the people that were able to challenge in certain ways within the studio, whether that be on the ski erg, for example, how far can you go in three minutes will make a lot of people stick. So a lot of people need to be able to understand that sort of pain tolerance and things like that as well, which sometimes lacks. But yeah, consistency is another one as well. So the people who achieve and maintain great results, consistent always, consistently listen to them. You better consistency to work the meal plan that they will be a lot of things as well. Yeah. So the people that didn't continue the journey and maintain the results, so they lost the structure because they weren't in the challenge anymore and they were doing their own thing and they didn't necessarily have the guidance or the support of the group or the coaches and I guess didn't see the or enjoy the process of those challenges by pushing themselves to continue to beat themselves or their past results. Because that's one thing that I found that when I spent five years yo-yoing between a hundred and what is it, seven, five kilos to 137 kilos, five years. Everything was like quick. I lost 30 kilos in 10 weeks when I went to Thailand. But coming back, like the environment was completely different. The So the behavior patterns were consistent, like you're saying, the consistency and the discipline were being in that environment, but understanding like having that plan. Okay, it's great that I spent the 10 weeks in Thailand, but right now what is my next 10 week block or what is the next thing that I'm going to keep challenging myself so that I don't go back and stack that, you know, 30 kilos all back on like a consistent did. And so I can definitely relate to what you're saying with that. And what were the, some of the things that you saw with men who lacked say the consistency or discipline, was there a common theme around men that did compared to the men that, that either had it already or built it through training? I guess so. I think that motivation really is probably the overall theme there. So whether you're highly motivated to continue the journey, no matter what it takes. And there's a, uh, there's some tips there for, for motivation. If you would like me to go through them, I can. Yeah, I can that's, yeah please share. Some tips. So with motivation, the number one rule is not to rely on motivation because the problem is that it's it's never there when you are low and you really don't feel like going. Motivation is not something that you can rely on. So instead, you'd rather want to design your environment for success. Um, um, so setting, setting yourself up, just making sure you have a gym that's enjoyable to go to. You want to feel comfortable there where you are. Some stats with motivation there that with guys, 50% of January gym join it, cancel their membership by the end of January. 40% okay. will cancel before the end of February. So that's some high numbers there. Some people that want to get in and really make a change to themselves, but can only last that two months or so before they change their mind or look for something else to take up that time. Another good tip here, use a three uh, minute rule. If you're alone in motivation, tell yourself, I'll only go and do 10 minutes. All I need to do, I just got to get in, do my 10 minutes of work. So whatever that be, just routine, 10 minutes, like a, a lot longer than 10 minutes. In fact, another one is if you want to have, so make it training like nice and fun. Uh, so whether that's join a, a studio like F45, which includes uh, different activities or exercises that can be fun sometimes, training fun and being up. So you want to be aware of your core values and you want to ensure that you're working towards that and being consistent with that is going to help you guys make long-term changes for the good. You want to be planning ahead, whether that be your meal plans or your training. So getting yourself ready the night before for your next day always helps. Your own music always helps or going somewhere where the music inspires you and motivates you. And you want to also go there with people, go there with friends. So it's got that social element as well. So you're always looking forward to going to catch up, but don't forget to train while you're there. 
and not just sit there and gossip and be social. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, setting up your environment for success and that 10 minute rule. I, I, it's a little trigger. I, I generally have to talk myself into when it comes into yeah, running distances. I always let's just pre suggest I had to, I did a, a 50 minute run and it was like, okay, just start with 10 minutes. And then I just work, I have a bit of a play, a bit of a game with myself to make it fun, count down the time and keep it interesting instead of just, just running and just waiting for the time to go by. So I really like that. And then, you know, you can almost mix it up as well. We did with your brain, for example, we'll change it into 30 seconds of sprint and then one minute of jog or so yeah. You definitely play games with yourself and motivate yourself in, in many ways. There are heaps of different tools there to get into it and stay committed to it. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard as well. You have to be realistic and know that that discomfort and the commitment factors, it's hard to do. It, it is a challenge to commit yourself to three to five sessions a week. I go potentially 30 to 45 minutes, you know, but if you have that goal and that aspiration, then you shouldn't have a problem and needs to become part of your life for there to be sustainable results there. And you're right. It's, it is challenging to, especially if you haven't, you know, not, if you're not someone that trains already to think of doing three to five, seven sessions a week, seems like a massive change. But I see this, even if it's simply starting by like a walk a couple of years ago when I wanted to get back into it, but yeah, obviously carrying the weight, getting close over 130 kilos again. I just started with a walk every morning just to get that, those daily habits in. And then it built up the type of training I was doing and so forth. And, but I see like the rewards of waking up a bit earlier to get that bit of exercise in outweighed the costs of it. And can you touch on a bit about some of the, and I'm sure you would have seen this a lot through people's journeys, like how you know, the benefits of health and fitness comes into play when it comes in into especially like mental health. Men that are unmotivated, who are really you know, down when they first start, but then as soon as they get a bit of movement and exercise into their life, how that transforms for them. Because for me, that's always played a huge part. Anytime the way I know that I'm um, no, I'm feeling 100%. I always look at, have I been exercising? Have I been sticking to my routine? Generally, I haven't. And that comes to play. So can you share a bit about that for us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. At some people have to start at a walk and you, you're right in finding that people will experience energy or a high, if you will. With exercise, when you're exercising, you're putting your body under stress. So you're releasing chemicals to be able to deal with that. And those chemicals actually will make you feel better. So it's almost like a run, I guess you could say. So exercising releases those dopamine um, and you're feeling really good. Even after the workout, you're feeling really good. So if you structure it properly, you do get those mental health benefits. With exercising, it's known that it will reduce things like anxiety and depression, negative moods or mind frames, um, and it helps to improve self-esteem and your brain cognitive function as well. It's been found to be particularly evident in people vulnerable to obesity as well. Like what you said, people carrying more weight, yes, they can achieve those results very quickly, but you know, these people as well, because they're working harder, you could say, because they are carrying more weight, will feel those benefits even more. Yeah. So with fitness levels, energy levels, increased upper body strengths, you only need three to three to five sessions. It doesn't have to be much to, to see these sort of benefits and the sessions around 45 minutes as well. So it doesn't take much to get these mental health benefits, improve sleep, increase interest in sex, better endurance overall in life, relief, improvements in room, energy levels and stamina, reducing your tiredness throughout the day. So if you start kick all day, um, you'll find that with a, a sort of routine of three sessions a week, you'll find energy levels will just keep you going and you'll be more comfortable within your day. Of course, weight reduction is will contribute to your self esteem there, where you just feel better overall. Uh, obviously, your cholesterol and cardiovascular fitness will be affected as well in a positive way. But all this collectively just helps you in life. Just overall feel better, and I can I can tell you that 
myself, even when I've been going through hard times, I always resource exercise. Like you said yourself, when I'm down, I'll have a session. And then after the set, I'm feeling much better and able to do things differently. That's how much it really helps you. It changes your mindset instantly. Definitely. Yeah. 100% it is for that lifestyle change is always going to help your mental health for sure. And when you just mentioned before, like for me, it, it doesn't necessarily fix the, the challenges I'm currently facing, but it gives me the ability to have eliminate that fogginess and I'm able to clearly think so that I can make a decision based on, on, on being on a sound mind where I'm not all flat and frustrated and angry. So that's, for me, one of the biggest benefits is we said when you're struggling, Getting in a workout is like my medicine in a way to be able to then think clearly of what is it that I need to do to resolve this challenge that I'm currently facing. So especially a 45-minute session, especially with an effort, 45 high-intensity training, like you might not want to do it at the start, but it's amazing like the feeling that you get towards the end, like how much more energy you have. And I guess that's part of what you were saying about with the dopamine release and feeling good in that, that, that sense of accomplishment that you were able to, to do that workout. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a reset, isn't it? When you have that fogginess, you're in a bit of a fight or flight mode. You're unable to make the proper choices or think clearly whatsoever. It's almost like you're just resetting that. And it's funny, you know, it's yeah. some, a lot of people I find develop this some sort of fitness sickness, I guess you could say, where they're addicted to putting themselves through that pain. They want to see how much they can push themselves, what they're actually capable of. They didn't believe in themselves, but now they'll do, and they want to know what they're capable of. And it's just amazing people's mindset. Like I always reassure them, like, you can do that. Wait, don't be scared to try because, you know, if you try and you can't, then you can't and you can – go back down in way. But people just don't, people underestimate themselves really. And once they find out what they're capable of, it's like a switch goes off and they're a changed person mentally. And it will affect, it will affect your whole life and it will change it for a positive because now you believe in yourself. I'm strong. And that's a massive thing for a lot of people. People that are down on themselves, don't really feel good about themselves. Uh, all of a sudden, it just bang, different people, confident. A lot of people who have come with different anxieties and things like that. One of the rewarding things I remember from my journey in the industry was I would receive cards, but the Christmas card had writing on it, like a, a note, like a message to me. Thank you so much. You helped me with my anxiety or thank you so much. I'm now actually able to have children because their health was so bad. They were unable to have children. So things like that, yeah, it's all, it was a good time. To have that. And unfortunate that things turned out the way that it did, but that's life. One thing that will remain, no matter where I end up for myself in my life, will be fitness and I'll continue to do so until my life's over. Yeah. And, yeah. and that would have been amazing receiving those cards and knowing you had that kind of impact on people Yeah, you know, and you were able, you were able to, make a huge positive change for people through helping them with their, their health. And yeah. That's awesome. Man. And so if you had to leave men three three tips that they could do right now to make a change, even if they're not at a gym, what are the three things that they could do or they should focus on to, to start their journey? Okay. I'll sit down and have a think about your goals, where you want to be and set something. And it doesn't matter how long that goal can <laughs> would take, set a goal to yourself so that you know where you want to head. With the sort of larger guys, one of the better tips I can give the larger guys is when you start your journey, you want to reduce body fat first. So speak to somebody who can help you. If they tell you anything other than reducing body fat straight up, don't listen to them, go somewhere else. You want to drop body fat first. It may take six weeks. It may take eight weeks, but like you said, you can have some very fast, good results, but start there. All right. It doesn't matter about muscle mass at that point in time, because a lot of people who are down on themselves will lose this body fat and then they'll see themselves 
and their whole mind will change about what they actually want because a lot of people think gaining muscle is the ultimate goal, but it's not. So if you are a large human, definitely losing body fat first, but make that sort of set that bar for yourself where you want to be and reduce it and then reassess your goals and go from there. And you've got motivation as well. You've got to find that motivation. And motivation for change occurs when people perceive a mismatch between where they are and where they want to be. So when clients recognize that their current behaviors and place in conflict with their values around in life and their accomplishment um, of self-identified goals, they're more likely to experience that life change for good. So be consistent, guys. Set it. Try to stick to it. And if you do quit, try again. And if you do quit, try again until it lasts. Awesome. Great tips. And if someone wanted to reach out to you personally, mate, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Is there a pl- social platform that you're on that they can reach out and send you a message? I do have a social platform. I'm sure you it up, but definitely I, I'm happy to help as many people as possible, I'm happy to do so and I'll spend the time to do so well, as much time as I can. So if you do have any questions, yeah, definitely shout out. I'm sure you will leave my info there, Pat. Um, yeah. I was good. Yeah. I've got to organize that for you. No worries. <laughs> and so everyone, thanks for tuning in and listening to us. Matt's got a wealth of knowledge and you can see through, throughout all the years of him running the F45 gyms, he's been able to impact other people's lives through health and fitness and your journey can start today. So it's just taking that first step and, uh, and making that commitment to change. Please share yeah, this episode and uh, just always remember you're stronger than you think you are. Stay resilient. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Thanks for being on the show. Hey, everybody. I just want to say Pat is a very good man. He's been generous with his time at all and he's really helped me out. He's a genuine good dude. So thanks very much, Pat. I oh, appreciate that, mate. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Really appreciate you listening to today's show. It means a lot to me that you are part of the journey and mission to help fathers be the best dads possible. I'd really appreciate it if you review the show and share it with someone you genuinely believe could benefit from this content. Please visit resilientdad.com for more content and resources as we build this community for dads everywhere.